Thank you. First of all, uh, Excellencies, my parliamentary colleagues, let me mention Mayor Denise Pua from Central District, Mr. Sakyadi Supat, Ms. Yo Wan Ling, and of course my colleague, Senior Parliamentary Secretary, Mr. Bei Yang King, also from the Ministry of Sustainability and Environment as well as Transport. So we are really colleague through and through. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Andrew Kung, Chairman, Public Hygiene Council, Advisors, um, Chan Hui Yo, who is here with us. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to one and all. Tatiya Tao Sang Hao, Selamat Pagi dan Selamat Hari Raya, the last day to celebrate Hari Raya today. And um, of course, Banakam. <laughs> Indeed, I'm delighted to join all of you here today for the launch of Keep Singapore Clean 2024. As Andrew has said, this is really a month long community uh, campaign to rally everyone, raise awareness, get everyone to take greater responsibility for the cleanliness of our shared spaces. Uh, and this year, Keep Singapore Clean 2024 um, has special significance because we have just vaccinated 2024 as the year of public hygiene. Uh, and the aim of vaccinating uh, this year as a year of public hygiene really is to galvanize a whole of nation effort in upkeeping the public hygiene standards and cleanliness of Singapore for a better society, of course, for everyone to be able to enjoy you know, a better, healthier, cleaner environment. And uh, this will usher in a renewed as well as intensified efforts towards cleaner, healthier, as well as a more resilient future for everyone in Singapore. So, you know, many people actually ask me, so if you vaccinate year 2024 as a year of public hygiene, what does that mean? Does it mean that we have very low levels of uh, hygiene and cleanliness standards? Is that why you are vaccinating this year as a year of public hygiene? Actually, on the contrary. Uh, in fact, the Singapore Management University's uh, public cleanliness uh, satisfaction survey uh, results, which was just released two days ago, so this is a annual survey, so 2023 results just released two, two days ago. Actually, it showed that, amongst other findings, 97% uh, of respondents um, actually were satisfied or very satisfied with the cleanliness of, their, of leisure places, public leisure places like playgrounds and parks in Singapore. And over 90% of the respondents were satisfied with the level of cleanliness of footpaths and neighbourhoods. So, you know, I, I think in, in general, the perception or, or, or satisfaction with the levels of cleanliness is good. But, of course, there are areas for improvement. There are areas that we can do better in and no prizes for guessing. I'm looking at my parliamentary colleagues and no guesses, no prizes for guessing. Why? Well, the findings show that public toilets uh, public toilets, particularly in coffee shops as well as hawker centres, rank the lowest in terms of satisfaction levels. Although, actually, for the most recent survey, the 2023 survey, there has been improvement in satisfaction level, uh, coincidentally, both by 7%. So, for uh, coffee shops, it improved uh, between 2022 and 2023 from 53 to 60%. And then hawker centres in tandem from 63 to 70 percent uh, in terms of um, levels of satisfa satisfaction, but they rank the lowest among all the other areas uh, that was surveyed. So we need to do more to improve, and it is timely indeed that we have announced the formation of a public toilet task force that will be chaired by my colleague SPS Bay as well as uh, Andrew. Uh, chairman of uh, Public Hygiene Council uh, and they will be working with private and public sector representatives uh, in the committee together with academia, together with industry experts to look at you know various ways, recommendations to improve the standards of cleanliness of uh, uh, our public toilets, particularly hawker centres and coffee shops. Um, in, indeed, you know, uh, this Keep Singapore Clean uh, campaign uh, really uh, embodies, I would say, uh, what 
we would call this forward SG exercise. The spirit of the forward SG exercise. And why do we say that? Because we say Keep Singapore Clean campaign is about rallying collective responsibility, greater shared responsibility among you know all of us uh, to take responsibility for the cleanliness of our shared spaces. And in fact, you know, during the forward SG exercise, um, one of the recognition, right, acknowledgement is the importance of collective responsibility in shaping our shared future. And really, one of the things we need to do, you know, and I'm sure you all aspire for our shared future is must have a clean and livable city. And in fact, the journey uh, towards our public hygiene standards uh, really also embodies this spirit of collective responsibility and collective action. We need the active participation of all stakeholders, whether it's government, corporates, you know, businesses, communities, individuals, uh, to take action collectively in order to maintain high standards of cleanliness and hygiene. And through the years, from the start, uh, when our founding Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, uh, shared this vision of a clean and green Singapore, he was the first one who launched the Keep Singapore Clean campaign in 1968. And through the years, uh, I think this you know, spirit of collective action, collective commitment and dedication uh, in terms of having a meticulous, planned clean, cleaning regime. I see many of the cleaning company partners here with us today. Uh, so this planned meticulous cleaning regime uh, as well as constant public education campaign that we have not stopped in order to always remind people and raise awareness of the need to keep our public spaces in particular clean and hygienic as well as, I must add, steadfast enforcement has helped us to make this transformation from what I will say is polluted backwaters to actually a world-recognized clean and green city. Uh, and I think it's important that we do not rest on our laurels, we do not take this for granted. We need to continue with our effort uh, to keep Singapore clean. And one of the key efforts we have is this annual month-long campaign. And this year, for the Keep Singapore Clean campaign uh, that PHC has um, launched, uh, one of the key focus to nudge positive behaviour uh, really is in three key civic responsibilities. Yeah? And what are they? Firstly, of course, proper disposal of trash. No littering, like that means, right? Secondly, leave behind a clean table. This one, um, I feel very strongly about it. <laughs> leave behind a clean table. And thirdly, maintain cleanliness in our public toilets. These are three key civic responsibilities that we aim to nudge positive behaviour. And I think you can do that with very small changes and a little, you know, in action and a little thoughtfulness that will go to uh, make a huge impact, right? And a positive behavioral uh, change. So next, I want to thank uh, PHC because over the years you have launched many, many initiatives. You know, uh, Edward is here, previous chairman too. Together, the, the council, you know, have launched many positive, very good initiatives uh, to much positive behaviour and to rally greater awareness uh, of the need to take shared responsibility in uh, maintaining good standards of cleanliness and hygiene. Uh, and indeed, some of these um, initiatives, firstly, of course, uh, keep Singapore clean. But in addition, as Andrew has mentioned, the SG Clean, the quarterly SG Clean Day, uh, as well as our National Community Toilets Group, and clean pots, which uh, Andrew also mentioned. Uh, and indeed, they have actually helped us uh, contributing towards you know, national cleanliness, I would say. Um, in particular, I would like to mention SG Clean Day, the quarterly SG Clean Day. Um, you know, this was launched in 2021. Uh, and when it was launched, um, grateful that all 17 town councils actually took part. And as Andrew said, this uh, SG Clean Day really is a day uh, when you know the premise, the areas that you select, whether it's an entire housing estate or particular premises, uh, the cleaners stop cleaning, and it is to spotlight the littering problem when the cleaners are not there, and of course it's to raise awareness of the need really uh, to help 
uh, keep public spaces clean through responsible action. Yeah. So 17 car houses uh, in housing estates stop cleaning for a day in order to engender this. And as Andrew has said, uh, over the years this has expanded to many premises, uh, including dormitories, public transport nodes, you know, shopping malls, parks, reservoirs, uh, attractions as well as dormitories uh, have participated in this uh, quarterly SG clean day. And indeed, uh, many of these communities, uh, corporates, uh, individuals have actually come out during this period, the SG Clean Day, to undertake to clean up the space as well as do litter picking activities. So we are indeed heartened uh, by this positive momentum. And I'm actually pleased to announce or to share that uh, from 2025 next year, this quarterly SG Clean Day will morph into a bi-monthly SG Clean Day. So they'll be organizing this on a bi-monthly basis. So we have got more opportunities for more people to participate and raise awareness as well as put into practice uh, uh, what we preach, right? That, you know, keep it clean. Uh, we hope that through this, uh, people will realize that, you know, active participation is needed, social responsibility, and that truly we will have a clean city not a clean city. We value the contributions of the cleaners and the cleaners will continue to play a role. But we do want to make sure you know, that everybody plays their part uh, through this uh, bi-monthly in future SG Clean Day. In addition, Corporate Action Network, which uh, Andrew has just announced, I think I'm indeed heartened uh, that uh, you know, we are going to actually get the corporates more actively involved, get the corporates to champion the cost of keeping Singapore clean. And I want to encourage more companies uh, to participate in this to make an even bigger impact. Yeah. So let me say this in conclusion. Um, Keep Singapore Clean, this event today, is but one of the many, many initiatives that we will be uh, carrying out, organizing, uh, through the various agencies and uh, partners throughout this year um, in support, right, in conjunction also with our Year of Public Hygiene. So next up, June, July, which is coming up very soon, watch out for our Go Green SG. Uh, there will be many exciting initiatives by our partners, uh, private public sector as well as the NGOs. And there will be many interesting behind the scene learning journeys. So look out for it when it's up for uh, registration. Uh, we had a very, very good participation and support last year and we hope that we will do, you know, it will be equally strong support that we will receive this year, especially in support of uh, Year of Public Hygiene. Next up, if you look at the backdrop just behind me, you will see a new logo. Year of Public Hygiene logo. And actually this logo would also be in all the collaterals, uh, uh, PhDs, uh, materials that are given out. There will also be this logo. It is actually a visual reminder and a call to action for everyone to join in, you know, this renewed and intensified effort uh, to raise awareness as well as to rally everybody to take action uh, in conjunction with the Year of uh, Public Hygiene. And indeed, uh, as I've said earlier, this is a journey, it's a long journey, started long ago, first Keep Singapore Clean in 1968 and it will continue to be a journey uh, because upkeeping high standards of cleanliness and hygiene is critical, is important. Um, it is not just aesthetic, um, it is actually for our well-being, for our safety, for our health, mental, physical well-being, for our health, for comfort, uh, for more sustainable uh, living environment and this is how we are building Singapore and this is how we want to live Singapore for generations to come. So let's all keep Singapore clean together. Thank you. Thank you.